From the year 1226 to 1670, the Mali Empire and its rulers reigned over large parts of West Africa. The empire helped shape the continent as we know it today by widely influencing its culture and the region through the spread of its languages, laws, and customs. Not only was the empire prosperous, but it became renowned for the immense wealth of its rulers. Their kings were called Mansas, and the wealthiest of them all was Mansa Musa, a generous, virtuous, and intelligent king. He ruled from 1312 to 1375, and is widely considered the wealthiest person to have ever lived. He ruled over the ancient kingdom of Mali, which spread across parts of modern-day Mali, as well as Senegal, Gambia, Guinea, Niger, Nigeria, Chad, Mauritania, and Burkina Faso. The kingdom was so large at one point that one 14th century traveler noted that it took four months to travel from the northern border all the way to the south of the Mali Empire. Mansa Musa, either the grandson or grandnephew of Sun Diata, the founder of the dynasty, came to power after the previous king disappeared at sea. Mansa Abu Bakur II had departed on a large fleet of ships to explore the Atlantic Ocean, but never returned. After his disappearance, Mansa Musa inherited the kingdom. At the time, the empire was already wealthy, but his work in expanding trade made Mali the wealthiest kingdom in Africa. His riches came from mining salt, the elephant ivory trade, and the less glamorous practice of slave trade and the spoils of war. But most of all, his vast wealth is attributed to the kingdom's expertise in mining gold. Any attempt at calculating his wealth is practically impossible. This is because he controlled over two-thirds of the world's gold production supply at the time. This conveniently was at the same time that Europe had just switched from the silver to gold standard in the mid-1300s. In essence, at a time when demand of gold was so high, he owned either a large minority or a majority of all the wealth known in the old world. With all this money, Mansa Musa developed cities like Timbuktu and Gao and turned them into important cultural centers. He attracted architects from the Middle East and across Africa to design new buildings for his new cities and revolutionize their architecture. Mansa Musa turned the Kingdom of Mali into a sophisticated center of learning in the Islamic world. Although Musa was the wealthiest person by far at the time, it wasn't until the year 1324 that the rest of the world got a glimpse of the king's expansive wealth. In the 17th year of his reign, he set out on his famous pilgrimage to Mecca. He left his country's border in order to perform the most sacred of devout Muslim duties. Mecca, of course, is believed to be the birthplace of Prophet Muhammad, and was, and still is, a common practice for wealthy Muslims to make the lengthy journey to pay their respects. Unfortunately though, in this day and age, travel was a treacherous ordeal, and the distance between Musa and his pilgrimage was a staggering 6,400 kilometers. Traveling from his capital of Niani on the upper Niger River, he made stops along the way in Walada, Tuat, and most notably in Cairo. In this capital of Egypt, we have the best documented testimony of the astounding spectacle Mansa Musa truly was. As described by eyewitness testimonies, Mansa Musa was accompanied on his journey by an impressive caravan consisting of over 60,000 men, including a personal retinue of 12,000 enslaved persons, all clad in brocade and Persian silk. The emperor himself rode on horseback and was directly preceded by 500 enslaved persons, each carrying a gold-adorned staff. In addition, Mansa Musa had a baggage train of 80 camels, each carrying roughly around 300 pounds of gold. Up until this point, the Kingdom of Mali was relatively unknown outside of West Africa, but clearly Musa was ready for this to change. Mansa Musa's prodigious generosity and piety, as well as the fine clothes and behavior of his followers, did not fail to create a most favorable impression. The historian Alu Mari, who visited Cairo 12 years after the emperor's visit, found the inhabitants of the city with a population estimated at over 1 million still singing the praises of Mansa Musa. It was said that Musa performed many acts of charity and flooded Cairo with kindness. So lavish was the emperor in his spending that he flooded the Cairo market with gold, thereby causing the overall value of the gold to dramatically decrease. 
Incredibly, 12 years after his visit, the markets were still struggling to adjust to the newfound surplus of gold. Because of this, stories of his fabulous wealth even reached Europe years later. The Catalan Atlas, created by Spanish cartographers, shows West Africa dominated by a depiction of Mansa Musa sitting on a throne, holding a nugget of gold in one hand and a golden staff in the other. After the publication of this atlas, Mansa Musa became cemented in the global imagination as a figurehead of stupendous wealth. Apart from this well-documented visit of Cairo, it was upon his return from Mecca that Mansa Musa began to revolutionize cities in his kingdom and cement his lasting legacy. He built some of the biggest mosques of the time and large public buildings in cities like Gao and most famously Timbuktu. Timbuktu became a major Islamic university center during the 14th century due to Mansa Musa's developments. He recruited many scholars from the wider Muslim world to travel to Mali, such as the Andalusian poet Abu Isaq al-Sahili, which helped establish Timbuktu as the center of Islamic learning of its day. The kingdom of Mali reached its greatest extent around the same time, a bustling, wealthy kingdom thanks to Mansa Musa's expansion and administration. Unfortunately, after such an impressive life, the date and circumstances of Mansa Musa's death is not certain. But the date most accepted by scholars is the year 1337. He was thereafter succeeded by his sons. His careful planning and skillful administration of the empire left it well off at the time of his death. But over time, the empire started to crumble and was superseded by European expansions. Well after his death, Mansa Musa remains ingrained in the imagination of the world as a symbol of fabulous wealth. However, his riches are only one part of his legacy, and he is also remembered for his Islamic faith, promotion of scholarship, and the patronage of culture in Mali. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed the content, and we'll see you in the next one.